Welcome to the Capsule Review Series. Today's selection that I would love to present to you is of the most luminous and enveloping love and peace accords when it comes to fragrances. I want to introduce you guys to the fragrances that are just full of patchouli and rose. Everyone knows that we all love the rose and oud combinations, but to me, the scent of patchouli, the indelible, most beautiful, uh, earthy, herbaceous, and heady fragrances come with that rose from Turkey to Damask, even the rose de Mai. These are fragrances that are guaranteed to make you feel of love and of peace. If that sounds like the type of content you think that you'll enjoy, pull up a seat, pour a glass, and let's enhance. Everyone, welcome to the dry down. This is the channel where we aspire to enhance and elevate the olfactive sensory experiences through the different faucets, aromas, and nuances from scent cigars to wines. I'm your host, Chris. Welcome to today's experience. Today, I want to start off by showing you and showcasing you some of the most beautiful rose patchouli fragrances on the market today. These are some of my favorite from my particular collection that exude the best elements of what I believe rose and patchouli can do together. So today, Starting out with the first fragrance in the scent profile, I want to introduce you guys to Carlisle. Carlisle is a beautiful, beautiful, heavily apopinax laden fragrance with apple, patchouli, rose, and a bit of vanilla. This is a very, very sensual fragrance. It starts out just, it, it, the ethereal nature of the rose in this one comes off so subdued but once it elevates itself throughout the whole duration of the fragrance the mid and the base of when it comes to its most explosive and most beautiful accord variation this is a fragrance that i think is romantic it's loving it's it's almost cherishable the way that this fragrance comes off it is one that i've when i first got into my collection it was somehow some way compared to a house brother late and I couldn't get that at all until I started to really pick up with green apple does and fragrances and so for this particular fragrance as well the green apple liqueur along with a nice warming spicy nutmeg comes off very very appealing it's substantiate the accords that Parfum de Marley loves to create and when Quentin Birch who was the perfumer for this he made a great great introduction fragrance that could be used for the masses but has a great niche appeal to it i love this particular fragrance this is one i wear very often in the fall time it's not it's too heavy of a fragrance the base is too heavy to wear spring and summer but when the fall time breaks here in michigan at about 40 degrees and below maybe 50 degrees and below this is one of the most spectacular fragrances as a patchouli and rose fragrance that you can put on your um scent as your, your day scent, your scent of the day and whatnot, this is a very good fragrance. And not let me forget what we came here for, the patchouli. The Accord of Patchouli that it comes out of the house of Parfums de Marley is a heady, very rich, very soil-like patchouli. It is one I've become adorned with in other fragrances that they do use it in. And it is one that I would recommend to anyone who wants to get into a very peaceful, sensual, uh, rose and patchouli combination. It's high on my list, highly one that I would recommend to anyone looking to get into rose and oud or rose and patchouli fragrances. All right, everyone. Next up on my list for beautiful rose and patchouli combinations is a House of Mason Francis Kirkshawn creation. And it's a fragrance that I believe personally is very, very slept on for what it does. The appeal of this fragrance, it's the opening is phenomenal. When I say phenomenal, I, I mean it is phenomenal. It is an accord that is blended so well with Artemisia and Cumin. It is a, it's so stark and striking that once you put it on, you, you it envelops you, it cocoons you in a very, very sensual style of fragrance. It's not one that's juvenile, not one that's playful, any way, shape, or form. This is a very adult, romantic, sexy, sexy leaning, 
not towards the ostentation side because some sexy fragrances can become overtly sexual this is a fragrance that is no way overtly overtly sexual this is one that is built off that rose core and it's a very very light lemon like taif rose this to me the taif rose rose to mind that's in this particular fragrance along with that warm slightly the, the patchouli in this one let me get that the patchouli in this one is slightly slightly heady but it has some of that warming cacao touch that patchouli can bring so it's not only soil like and earthy and leaf like it also has the touches that can make it more of a gourmand or a fragrance but it's never a part of the fragrance that overwhelms this is one that's primarily built off of a very very illustrious sandalwood accord along with a cumin that brings up the sexuality the sexual fermentation of this fragrance and then a smooth smooth artemisia which makes it very very camphorous but useful in the way that they blended this fragrance so when they put this one together over at the house of kirk john he blended a nice warm cinnamon accord inside this cumin so those two makes it a very spicy warm combination then he changed the program on us and then put the rose and patchouli in the mid and gave us a base of artemisia in this fragrance when it dries down this by far, as I stated, is one of the most ethereal, peaceful, hug and kiss fragrances that you can buy. And this, this is for me, if you are a sophisticated gentleman, this is a perfect style of first date fragrance in the winter time. It's no off-putting edges to it. It's very mellow, very smooth. It projects, has a great sea eyes trail to it lasts for about five hours and once that fifth hour goes down on you it's a very very cocoony fragrance of about one feet if that and that's what makes it its best because it's not something that's going to overwhelm your lover this is a great great fragrance woody in the base the animatic cumin the nice heady herbaceous artemisia floral lemony taif rose and that very very soul and sweet like patchouli a great fragrance to put your nose on test it go to any fragrance counter neiman marcus sax barney's uh, they all have this particular fragrance. You can get it anywhere. Very good fragrance for this combination. And so next up, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to introduce you guys to Portrait of a Lady by the House of Frederick Mall. This particular fragrance, let me just conjure the notes for you real quick. This is a fragrance built off of patchouli, black currant bud, ambergris, Turkish rose, sandalwood, cinnamon, musk, benzoin, a delicious delicious hint of raspberry accord civet clove incense and olibano or incense slash olibano this to me has to be one of the most cordial sexy fragrances that you could put on your skin if you're looking for any reason to have a patchouli and rose combination first and foremost i would suggest that you get portrait of a lady do not in any way, shape, or form let this name fool you. Frederick Moore, Portrait of a Lady. Don't even ask me where the name came from. It, it kind of tastes that this is a feminine fragrance to most people, but it is by no way, shape, or form anything other than unisex leaning masculine. The sexiness of, of this fragrance comes from a zesty, vibrant opening of that black currant bud that is just so, so inducing of just love and peace. You also have the, the airy, soil-like, sexy patchouli and the incense in this, the burning spiritual incense in this particular fragrance makes this one of the most attractive fragrances that you could put on. I love the way that this fragrance makes me feel. It is a, a it not only puts you into an uplifting mood spiritually, but this damn thing puts you into a sexy, sophisticated, you are ready to go out in any situation when it comes to a evening out, nightlife, lounge. You ready to go and you are the room. You don't have to compare. You don't have to ask about who controls the room. You are the room with this particular fragrance. You walk in, you have sandalwood. You have an explosive patchouli, heady yet camphorous and sweet and warm. Current bud that makes it vibrant, almost lemony, tangerine, and um, zesty like. Ambergris slash ambroxan that makes it smooth, mellow, and attractive because of that animatic feel to it. And of course, that seductive, seductive Turkish rose. One of the most spectacular roses that you can put in perfumery. 
it is the highlight of this particular fragrance. And if you ever want to have a fragrance that screams out, I am him, this is that particular fragrance. Very gorgeous. Man, I, when I say Portrait of a Lady is a beautiful rose patchouli fragrance, and I don't mean beautiful, just in, just delicate. I mean gorgeous, beautiful. You put this on your skin, you will be the eye, ears, nose, looked upon, talked about person in the room. Gorgeous fragrance. Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Maul. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you now to what many people will call the captain of the industry when it comes to rose and patchouli fragrances. This here is the, what I would call the quintessential luxury product from the house of Zirjov. This is Richwood, and Richwood, a part of the 1717 Stone Label Collection, is by far a go-to fragrance for anyone that wants to have a luxury patchouli fragrance in their collection. Now, many of these fragrances I've described as ethereal, I've described as wonderful, warming, sexy, alluring. Richwood is a fragrance that has a particular way of coming across as wealthy. It is not a fragrance that I would say is sexy. It is not a fragrance that I would say is alluring. The only thing that comes into my mind, the conjuring feeling, the conjuring notion, and the conjuring smell is wealth. This fragrance smells so luxurious. It has an opening accord of bergamot sandalwood from Mysore, which is the most unique part of this fragrance, the Mysore sandalwood. It is one of the most sought after sandalwoods in perfumery. And when you can get a hold of pure Mysore sandalwood and put in your fragrance, you have made a luxury, luxury product for the wealth. Also, geranium, the grapefruit, all these things come in to make this most bright, almost astringent, tangy, just mouth-watering opening of citrus accords, bursting again with another fragrance in this collection that has black currant buds. It is also has a very, very warm and seductive mid of amber. The amber is more of the labdanum style versus the vanilla style. So when they made this amber cord, you could smell the leathery touches and the leathery touches are just the smoothest, most luxurious leather touches that you can put into a fragrance. It has a animatic touch of coumarin, um, not the sweet coumarin, this, this tonka note has a bitterish smell to it, like a, um, almost like a bitter walnut smell to it. So the coumarin comes off as a touch sweet, but more bitter. The musk, the patchouli, the rose, vanilla accords in this. This is by far one of the best woody citruses that you can put your nose on, especially if you're one that wants to convey wealth. Now, I don't mean to put this fragrance in a category above any other fragrance. There's no echelon for this fragrance to go in above the rest. But what I will say is that if you want to have a scent on you that smells of luxury, smells of wealth, that smells and brings you to the epitome of fragrance, that brings you to illuminate everyone around you it's this particular fragrance. This is one, this stone label Richwood, is one that many people can't even wrap their minds around. Some people say it, 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 they just don't understand why it is what it is. And then 30 minutes after being around you, you get a compliment on the shoulder. You get a, just everyone becomes almost the, the, the reactions that come off this particular fragrance. What you will hear more than any other reference to this particular scent when you wear it and you get a compliment is my god what is that is that and then they don't know what to say they come up with all kind of questions and answers for themselves they, they just don't know what to say because this fragrance has so many well blended just perfect tunes to it it is the rose patchouli combination that is the encompassing and embodiment of rose and patchouli. So with these particular fragrances, these four, if you have the mindset to carry off sophistication, a little bit of lustrousness, a little bit of um, je ne sais quoi, if you wanna feel your best, look your best, and then smell your best, ultimately, a rich, 
warm patchouli and rose fragrance can do that for you. I want to introduce you once again, PDM Perfume de Marley Carlisle, Mason Fragrances, Kirk Johns, Lumiere Noir, Poor Home, Frederick Malls, Portrait of a Lady, and Zierjoff Ritual. Perfect rose patchouli combination fragrances to give you everything you need in a fragrance to make you smell uplifted, spiritual, love, and peaceful. I would love to introduce you guys to a cigar that came on my radar about a week ago. And after smoking just one cigar, it blew my mind. This is the Amazon Basin Extra Anejo that is sent around a, a tobacco varietal called the Burganca. This is a cigar made by CAO, produced in their factory in Nicaragua. This is one of the most prolific cigars that I've smoked with a cedar aroma ever. This is the most velvety smooth, velvety texture, smoke and body that I've, I, I must say, I am very, very impressed with this cigar. For me, let's just get down to brass tacks about it. This is a Toro size cigar, six by 52. As I said, a Nejo, which means it is extra aged by the, the company to become a more delicate nuance, but more uplifting than other nuance type of cigar. So with some nuances of it will be subdued because of the aging and some will be enhanced, especially whatever way they chose to dry and ferment the extra years of the, uh, the cigar. This is one of the best cedar accorded aromas I have ever smelled in a cigar. This thing, I smell light, warm, ethereal cedar coming off this thing, man, and it is so velvety smooth. The smoothness of the texture of this smoke is billowing, but it's never overwhelming. I, I don't even know, I don't even know if I ever smoked a cigar that had these particular taste profile and or body textures. The strength on this, I'd say medium to my taste is a medium uh, strength cigar. Off the foot, I get a very beautiful, as I said, cedar cord. I also get a, a somewhat of a fig leaf accord at the tip of it as well, especially uh, at the foot. The overall visual aspects of this cigar. It is a dark chocolate, oily, very oily, just seamless. No, you can't even tell where they started and finished the cigar. A little bit of lumps, that's from the aging process. The band is a wrapped tight uh, leaf of tobacco. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous cigar. So let's get into the first third as I ramble and tell you exactly how beautiful this cigar is. The first third, I got a very nice touch of the cedar cords along with the, almost from my standpoint, it was a dark cherry cedar. And I don't know if you guys have ever smelled sycamore. Sycamore to me is a, a oil, a fragrant oil that I've smelled many times and I got a lot of sycamore from this particular cigar. It also has some of the nicest, smoothest cayenne pepper taste to it as that first third started to warm up and become a part of the textures of the cigar. Getting to the second third of the cigar, it became so layered in this beautiful cedar accord. I don't know, I wanna look up and see exactly where they aged this and how they aged this in the barns, did they age this and where? because the cedar off of this, the, however it enveloped the, the, the natural taste and tones of cedar is beautiful. Um, I also get in the second third of this cigar, not only that slight sycamore taste, I also started to get somewhat, and this is another thing, go back to the perfumery, that you can start to smell different nuances, which makes that so much fun to interconnect these two. I get a fig leaf off of this particular cigar that I've never gotten in the cigar before. And I believe that might be attributed to the Baganta leaf for some reason of some sort, because I've never had that particular varietal tobacco leaf age. I've had it once before in the actual um, Amazon Basin, but it was when it first came out a few years back and I didn't get the profiles that I get now. 
So as we get into the final third of this cigar, for me, when I was smoking it, you could actually feel the palate, you could actually feel your mouth walls and your lips becoming inundated with a touch of oil. I'm sure that has something attributable to the aging process they took it through because I would show you the wrapper, but I've got, I've lost it somewhere. But that's neither here nor there. The wrapper is, has taken on some of the forms of the oil. It's golden brown. It's not even clear cellophane anymore. This particular cigar, this final third, gave me some of the most relaxing touches and feels. If you guys ever had graphite uh, variety of coffee, it's a very dark, 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 just almost pitch black variety of coffee bean that you can get out of Sumatra. I also picked that up in the final third of this. So it, at that point, the flavor profile that I picked up and was most tasteful, and I smoked this past the actual um, wrapper on the actual cigar, and I never go that far most times. That would take me down to a nub, and I actually hate that because of smoke production being too warm, but I love the flavors coming off this particular cigar. As it ended, the natural taste and tones of cedar came out very well. A little touch of smoky and um, flavorful hickory, of course, came off. The sycamore, which is a, a vegetal, wood vegetal smell and aroma that is fantastic in the cigar. The chocolate came out. And that dark, dark coffee was one of the most spectacular smokes that I've had in ages. I've always thought that my mantelpiece of um, cigars would entitle me to just think of the, the major brandings such as Padron, uh, Arturo Fuentes, the uh, My Father brands. Those are the brands that I've always had on my mouthpiece because they were ones that I looked to smoke at the most. But when I say CAO has introduced a cigar that any cigar lover will take to and want to get more of, I don't know how they're going to meet the demand for this because what I'm told they have only 18 count boxes and only 5,800 of those boxes. So I'm sure these are going to sell out fast. If you can get one in your local uh, cigar lounge, cigar store, or go on any of the international uh, cigar websites, I would suggest that you get your hands on this Esteli made, Amazon Basin grown, Bacanera, Braca, Bragancan cigar leaf and see how it tastes and how it reacts to your palate. Chocolate, coffee, cayenne softly, white pepper softly in the end, hickory, sycamore, and the most amazing velvety cedar I've ever tasted. And that is the CAO Amazon Basin Extra Nejo, aged two years after wrap in some special form of fashion, which I will find out. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's my experience for today. I gave you four of the most beautiful uh, rose and patchouli fragrances that you can come across uh, to give you a center peace and love effect to you um, and what I mean that I mean that the patchouli gives you that peaceful serenity feel the rose gives you that enveloping loving feel and combination between each one will give you a delight it will give you a warmth then give you a feel that many fragrances can't do um, also the wonderful cedar based Anejo CAO Amazon Basin this is my um, most, I, I'm most happy with this particular cigar and this most particular um, capsule selection for you guys. These are my, some of my favorite fragrances in my collection and are now at least one of my top five for 2023 cigar. So, that's my experience for today with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the experience, the capsule series review for you. If you find anything entertaining or educational about this particular review or overview, I just ask you to hit like in the bottom. Also, share this with your friends. If you have friends and family that are into cigars, wines, and fragrances, this is the place for them to be. This is the community that's going to build off of that type of environment. We're going to talk about aromas, faucets, and nuances of scent cigars and wines. You guys have a blessed day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.